Our next Impossible Lands box of minis is Heroes and Villains, which is a pretty diverse collection of potential PC minis based on the folks you might encounter in the Impossible Lands region of Galarian. And many thanks to Whiskus for sending it to us to review. Don't know what the Impossible Lands are? We have a whole video for you right there in the eye in the corner of your screen. This is the second video in our Impossible Lands mini series or minis series, you can check out video one, Accursed Constructs, right up there in the eye right now. And once again, we're gonna be joined by Paizo's mini master, Mark Moreland, at the end of this video to talk about how all these mini sets came to be. So without further ado, let's meet our Impossible Lands heroes and villains. I have just a few things that I use in every D&D &D game I play, and my favorite one is the animated spell cards from our sponsor, Hit Point Press. Before my players arrive to the table, I check out their spell books and put together a little deck of these animated cards for each one of them. If they have spells from other sources, I use the spellcraft cards included in the decks, which have awesome animations on the front and blank backs, so you can sleeve them and write your own spell details with dry or wet erase markers. My players are wowed every single time. They're not only gorgeous, but they really help your players organize their spells and remember if there are any ongoing spell effects that they need to track for duration or concentration purposes. Series two of the cards are available now, including spell decks for levels six through nine, conditions, illusions, townsfolk, and more. Check out the links below the video or visit animatedspells.com. We're starting off with one that does have a bit of a lean, at least in my set. Skipped Leg Day Syndrome is what I call it because it afflicts minis with thin legs like our Gorn Manipulator here. You can fix it with the hot water trick. Let me know if you need tips on that in the comment section below. Gorn are sentient plants made playable in Impossible Lands, though this mini is based on the NPC in Bestiary 3. They were originally magically created by Nex to be food, but like the leftover tacos in your fridge from last year's Cinco de Mayo party, they have sent gained sentience. Oryads are genie kin, mortals who have elemental ancestors, Oryads from Earth Elementals. Genie kin is a versatile heritage, meaning that you can take it along with most any ancestry. So you can be an orc genie kin or an elf genie kin, pretty much whatever you like. Genie kin were introduced in the Lost Omens Ancestry Guide with some rather generic elemental feats and expanded upon with new, somewhat more specific ancestry feats in Impossible Lands. This mini is based on the Oryad Guard from Bestiary 2. Oryads are generally stoic, but feel an inexplicable pull to complete a pilgrimage, usually to some site of great power or importance. Shield Marshals are responsible for the safety of the city of Alkenstar, the source of firearms for the inner sea region. Not only are they intimately familiar with the labyrinthine streets and idiosyncrasies of the city, but they're also expert shots with their own firearms and know how to utilize technology to aid their cause. This mini is based on the art from Guns and Gears, but the Shield Marshal was added as an uncommon archetype in Impossible Lands if your PCs decide to join up, perhaps in your Outlaws of Alkenstar campaign. She's even got a little badge. The House of Perfection in Jamare helps followers along the path of Iori, the god of enlightenment and self-perfection, using martial arts as a tool of physical, spiritual, and mental exercise. If a PC in your campaign studies there, they can potentially take the Student of Perfection archetype from the Lost Omens World Guide, which has the art that inspired this many. And then you can point them to Impossible Lands, which contains five more archetype feats, as well as 12 new focus spells. Like the Oryads, Sylphs are also Genikin, descended from Air Elementals. Again, you can find their ancestry feats in the Lost Omens Ancestry Guide and Impossible Lands. They're generally known as free spirits, going wherever the breeze might take them. They also have a reputation for listening to the wind, a fancy way of saying snooping. They don't usually use their ill-gotten information for immoral purposes, just to stay in the know. The Sylph sneak stat block is in Bestiary 2. Sulis are also Jinikin, but they're descended from Jan, elementals who are composed of a mixture of air, water, earth, and fire, and who are native to the material plane. They're known for having a focus on balance and harmony, often taking roles as artisans, mediators, and storytellers. The Suli Dune Dancer from Bestiary 2 is a level 1 creature who uses their abilities to bolster their companions. 
Venara are described as inquisitive, mischievous, monkey-like humanoids, and they're made a playable ancestry in impossible lands. They've made bitter foes of the ancient Rakshasa Maharajas and the evil Nagas, but the rural Vidrani of the jungle see them as friends. The Venara disciple here from Bestiary 3 exemplifies their cultural virtues of order, discipline, compassion, kindness, and community. Finally, we have the Vishkanya, also made playable as an ancestry in Impossible Lands. Many Vishkanya look almost human until you get up close and you notice their golden eyes, their vertical pupils, and their forked tongues, giving away their Ophidian ancestry. While they face quite a lot of prejudice due to their venomous blood, they have endured thanks to their strong communal bonds, often meeting in secret and rarely venturing far from their Vudran homeland. They frequently find happiness in artistic pursuits. Now let's bring in Paizo's mini guru and director of brand strategy, Mr. Mark Moreland, to tell us more. Mark, thank you for coming back and joining us again. Hey, no problem. I even wore the same shirt as last time. I did too. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are the chances? But let me ask you this. Well, I mean, I, I, some of these days when we're working from home, yeah. like yeah. Is sometimes you just forget to change clothes. It just happens. I think yeah. we kind of both have fallen into that. That's totally what happened. Uh, heroes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Heroes and Villains is a set that I think really focuses on those PC character minis. And I wanted to ask you, uh, there are a lot of different classes. There are so many different ancestries in Pathfinder 2nd Edition now. And I know that you know that you're not going to be able to make too many minis for each of these different ancestries and classes. So how do you decide which art or which kind of mini you want to make for each one? Do you focus in on like, what would be a broadly appealing version of this character? What's going to be the most popular? Or is there another way you go about doing it for choosing these minis? Yeah, I mean, I think ideally, like when we were doing the Pathfinder Pawns, uh, for example, we would always try and do a male and a female um, version um, and in some cases for like core classes we would try and do uh, a member of each ancestry in each class or sort of each class group so that you have one that could maybe be a bard or a rogue or a you know other skill monkey um, and one that's the uh, you know the Maybe they're a paladin, maybe they're a fighter, maybe they're a barbarian. Um, but uh, but when, when it comes to, to plastic, we, we don't want the whole set to just be one ancestry or everyone with a you know a bow and arrow so we uh we sort of have to, to have to pick and choose and uh especially for our uh uncommon or rare ancestries we don't often have uh a, a, a surplus of art to choose from so in the case of for, for this pack uh, you know we've got like the oriad guard I think there were maybe two or three um, Oriad full body illustrations that we had to pick from to send to WizKids and say, make a mini of this. Um, so that helps narrow it down. Um, in, in the case of all these, we knew that these were ancestries that appeared in, or, or were, were uh, less rare in the impossible lands region of our setting uh so we wanted to ensure that that if they're if they're ever going to have a place to get made into a mini this is it so let's make sure we do that um and then i think in almost every case um we just went with their um their bestiary uh, sample character so you know the the vishkanya infiltrator that's the stat block and the reference art from the Vishkanya bestiary entry. Um, obviously, if you're playing a Vishkanya, you might be a completely different class. Um, Vishkanya is sort of lucky that the things that make them a Vishkanya aren't super visible, um, especially at a 25 millimeter scale. Um, so, uh, so you could probably use a human or half elf. Um, uh, mini for those and and it would be fine uh, for something like the Venara who's a you know sort of a, a Southeast Asian monkey person um, as opposed to like a chimp person uh, which we have in the Mwangi Expanse region um, they it, there's not a lot of monkey person 
<laughs> minis out there. So we sort of had to go with the more general so that whether you're playing the um, the Venara monk, which is the, the Venara disciple that we did, or you're a Venara wizard or sorcerer or, you know, inventor or gunslinger or whatever, we're never going to be able to do 15 versions of, the, of that. Um, so so we just went with the, the, the most general. Awesome. And you, you mentioned you touched on the, the Pathfinder ponds a little bit, and we know, I guess, Paizo is kind of moving away from, from making the ponds. Uh, is there any chance that we'll be seeing more minis down the line to kind of fill that gap? Or is there another plan? Or, or is Paizo maybe focusing on some of their new online platforms, maybe more than the tabletop at this point? Uh, well, we're certainly not abandoning the tabletop platform. I mean, that's that's our bread and butter. That's what we do. Um, what minis we produce is largely the the purview of our licensees. Um, you know, between Pathfinder and Starfinder, uh, we have uh, three active minis partners uh, who are um, you know WizKids, Reaper, and Archon Studios. Uh, so so we've got a number of of irons in the fire um and uh my hope is that those continue to meet the uh, the community's needs in terms of representation of the unique pathfinder uh ancestries or classes or monsters or what have you um while also uh helping the larger gaming community um you know who who doesn't just want more plastic everyone wants more plastic um, but we don't make those ourselves so it's it's it, it, it's not our our call at the end of the day, um, and we'll we work with our partners uh, to produce the the content that they uh, that they want to bring to market and ensure that it's the highest quality and that it's meeting customer demand. Um, but but that's that's ultimately their question, not ours. So um, while we are ramping up our VTT support, um, just you know uh, for the, for almost the last three years, VTT has sort of been the, the trend that people have been going out of necessity and we don't want to um to completely ignore that that burgeoning market um but that doesn't mean that we're go that we're abandoning plastic altogether and it seems like uh a lot of since uh the recent days at least since the second edition transition a lot of the minis have folk have been a fairly general lot because i think we've been getting about two sets a year from pathfinder battles if i remember correctly and then usually maybe one for starfinder and they haven't really focused in on any particular adventure path since i think kingmaker was the last one that really focused on a specific adventure path well a thousand the, was there a? I guess that set, that set was the Mwangi Expanse set was originally, oh, Spance, yeah. was originally called the Strength of Thousands set. Oh, and okay. Similar to the Impossible Land set, we had to um, to set the set list and get WizKids working on sculpting and modeling um, long before the books were done. So while we originally wanted that set to be a Strength of Thousands um, mini set, uh, we didn't have any of the reference art like some some of the late volume books were still being written so we didn't even know character names if we had wanted to put major npcs in in plastic so uh we ended up since we were pulling so much art from the wangi expanse book and other sources we just renamed the set um so so there was that one and then we also had the um uh city of lost omens set um, was a strong tie-in to the um, Agents of Edgewatch Adventure Path, but wasn't but wasn't called that um, just because the you know in in most cases minis are more versatile than an Adventure Path. An Adventure Path is one story, um, and so tying an AP too or tying a a mini set too closely to an AP can give the message to potential customers that this is not for you you're not playing this ap so you can't use these minis and that's not the message we want to give um because at the end of the day even if it's a named you know orc barbarian that you get a mini of that mini can represent any orc barbarian or you know any other class uh ancestry combination that, that we happen to produce 
that uh, begs to two questions to my mind. The first one being, um, one thing we've seen from WizKids lately, especially on the D&D side, is going back to older adventure paths and making smaller sets of maybe five or six very important NPCs for those adventures. And I was wondering if that's something that y'all had talked to WizKids about or considering for some of y'all's adventure paths. Yeah, I mean, doing those small, like, five to eight figure boxes is something we're no stranger to. I mean, we did, we've done, I think eight or nine of the iconic uh, heroes boxes now. Um, and that's sort of been where we've focused those types of sets um, because our iconic characters are such um, sort of ambassadors of our brand. And they're so, for lack of a better word, iconic to um, to what, what Pathfinder and in Starfinder's case, Starfinder is. Um, and uh, so we've focused on that. I think that how this particular set or other um, other impossible lands, non-randomized um, uh, mini sets do um, will inform whether that's something we want to explore down the road. I think um, we we have no shortage of adventures to draw characters from. Um, the real question is is what's the demand like for minis? For an AP that's four or five years old, um, it's you know, I, as much as I would love to see a, a mini of every character we've ever done, um, we do have to pick and choose what we're supporting based on what's going to be, you know, what's going to move units on at, at the stores. So I'm going to poke you about one in particular because it feels like one of the pushes that we were getting maybe even right now like yesterday uh, i got a box of battle cards for abomination bolts and i think is the uh, uh abomination bolts is i think the most successful pathfinder second edition adventure path so far is my understanding and we're seeing a 5e version of that coming out soon too so i was wondering might that be if we do see something adventure path specific might that be a good choice? It certainly is. I mean, the the uh, we've had discussions of whether or not we want to do an abomination vault set, and um, I think that that the consensus now, or at least the strategy we're taking, is to be as as general as we can um, whenever possible, um, because uh, we want the minis to be as useful at at, mi at as many tables as possible. Um, so we don't currently have an Abomination Vault uh, set in the works. Um, it, that or Strength of Thousands, if I had to, if I had to guess which AP from Second Edition would be most likely to go back and do um, either a mini set or a full set for, um, would be those two. I mean, those I think are the the ones that really grabbed the the community and and have had the the staying power and legs that, that we would expect to see in in something that got continued support year after year after year so um nothing in the works now but that doesn't mean it's never going to happen because we're you know we're always making new stuff that's very fair i do love strength of thousands i think it's one of my favorite uh, my favorite adventure paths I've seen so far for, for second edition. And, and I am running Abomination Vault. We just got started with that. I do have a love for Alkenstar. So luckily this set also supports that. And since we're still talking about heroes and villains here, is there anything else you want to tell us about this particular set that jumps out at you from putting it together before we wrap up for today? No, I mean, I think that one of the things that this does is it gives people um, the, uh, a lot of the, the, uh, planar scions the elemental planar scions you get the the sylph the suli and the oread um which i don't believe we'd ever done in plastic before i, I i'm pretty sure we did uh, ifrit and uh, uh what's the other one undyne but uh but it, it it's good to get those i know those were really popular and with uh, rage of elements coming uh, next year, next summer um the, those ancestries are going to have an even brighter spotlight on them uh, in the coming year as we focus a little bit more on some of the elemental planes and and the uh, you know native outsiders who uh, who have an ancestry from there 
Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today, Mark. Uh, let's go freshen up our shirts a little bit and we'll come back and talk about another oh, yeah, set. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so mm -hmm. much. I'll go put on my identical shirt that looks just like it uh, for the next I have, video. Luckily, I have six of these, so it's perfect. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you again to Mark for joining us today. Impossible Lands Heroes and Villains is available now for between 40 and 50 bucks. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section down below. And don't forget to pick yourself up some animated spell cards from Hit Point Press at the link below the video. And this is the week that I plan to jump back onto TikTok as well. I'm gonna be sharing my GM tips, behind the scenes thoughts as a content creator, first looks at products that come in, stories from my ridiculous life, and whatever else, um, and whatever nonsense maybe I get up to. You can find all my social media links right here, including TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Mastodon. Be sure you're subscribed here to see the rest of our Impossible Lands videos, as well as our upcoming review of the Beetle and Grimm's Platinum set for Spelljammer. Until next time, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. <laughs>